Joining me now on the program is Honorable Adejoru Adogun from Ondo State. It's good to have you on the program. Thanks for having me. The countdown to the end of the 9th National Assembly has started. Share with us your experience so far. First, um, the opportunity to be among 360 Nigerians who have the privilege of being elected into the House of Representatives out of over 200 million people. It's a rare privilege. Um, it's given me an opportunity to actually interact with a um, cross-section of brilliant Nigerians from all over the country. And then you look at the fact that I have an opportunity actually to be of service to my constituents, the people of my state, and um, to Nigeria generally. It's been, it's been awesome. Your primaries seem to have thrown up so many issues across the country. Your primaries seem to have thrown up so many issues across the country. Well, um, first, you know, the first thing for every legislator is an aspiration to probably um, rerun and then return to the National Assembly. Or, but for me, you know, it's beyond that. I've lived a life in which, you know, every action I've taken has been propelled by God. So I'm just like, okay, um, what next? Service, either at the National Assembly or elsewhere. I'm still going to continue to serve Nigerians from wherever I am, either here in the National Assembly or even outside. I mean, I'm at a stage in my life in which all I just want to do is give back to, you know, to thank God and to thank the people for the good things that's happened to me in the past. Your party primary seems to have thrown up so many issues across the country. What are the issues affecting you? I think for some reasons, you know, um, some agents of my party made the error of not understanding the Electoral Act is not something they could manipulate. The Electoral Act is strict about, you know, process of conduct of primaries and where it could be held. And then for some reason, some certain elements um, decided that they do not have enough confidence in coming to the constituency where general election will be held to conduct a primary. So primaries was held in the state capital. And, um, We've challenged it and we're very positive that the outcome will actually throw away the illegality that's been done. And we're hoping that you know, the uh, court will rule in good, term, in good time so that um, you know, the proper thing can be done. There seems to be a high number of lawmakers not returning to the National Assembly and this seems to have become a culture every four years. What is the implication of this? Well, it's sad. But I think it's a reflection of the misunderstanding of um, the role of the legislature in Nigeria. Um, in other climes, what people do is try to encourage longevity because the longer you stay, the more experience you gain, the more you are able to uh, contribute to lawmaking and then um, providing checks and balances on the executive. That's the essence of lawmaking. But I think in Nigeria, it's more like um, there's this you know, wrong perception that is a chop by chop business. And unfortunately, you know, the political party system in Nigeria is such that certain elements, certain individuals are giving more power than even the populace. They're giving more power than the people. So you have pockets of, you know, people who by some virtue God has lifted them to certain positions. Rather than them believing that, you know, the opportunity they have is for them to allow the best to emerge from amongst the people. They rather want to put their puppets, their cronies, people who can say yes or yes sir to them rather that people can say yes sir, to the, to the um, citizenry. How well will you say your representation has impacted on the lives of your constituents? Immensely. Immensely because right from day one I had a plan. Um, before I got into politics, before I got into elective office, I'd actually sat down to identify the problems of my people. And I keep saying that you know, the most important thing that we need to deal with in my constituency is human resource. When you have young people finish universities, finish secondary schools, and they uh, become area boys and political and talks, rather than being gainfully employed, will have a serious problem. So what I've done is focus a lot on actually getting people gainfully employed. And at last count, at least we've employed about 65 people through my intervention. Um, I introduced scholarship scheme for um, young people, um, some into colleges of education, some into the universities, to ensure that People who are indigent but you know, have enough um, human capacity to be educated, are given an opportunity to be educated. And in that, I think we'll reach close to a thousand people. 
So we've intervened even in the areas of infrastructure, road infrastructure, um, education especially because I focus a lot on education. Um, intervention in providing furniture for schools, books for schools, um, school um, building because in some places. And then in security areas where we'll be, doing, we'll be police barracks, we've tried to help police with certain equipment to at least ensure that they're doing better. So generally I think I've, I've, I've done well. Your committee is currently investigating the recent jailbreak in Kuje. 65 officers were said to be on duty, yet they couldn't withstand the bandits. What does it say about the capacity of security agencies? It's been interesting. Um, the most important thing is that it's, it was, it's regrettable that it happened. And um, we're hoping that lessons will be learned. From what we've heard so far, um, it's a shame that um, we practically allowed bandits to walk into the prison and take people away. It was not that we didn't have the capacity to resist. It was just that the people who were deployed to that location did not show the will from the account of you know, um, those who came and gave um, evidence before us. They did show that you know, the hand men on ground didn't show the will. And then um, the process of reinforcement was a bit too slow and sluggish. And then there's actually a problem that we need to address, the issue of night operation among our security forces. We should not act like they only have issues during the day and they're unable to act at night. I think it's a major issue that we need to address in this country. This is not the first time we will be having a jailbreak. It seems there were no measures to forestall the reoccurrence. Well, I think, I think that's the whole essence of the investigation by the House of Representatives, to look at you know, what happened, lessons to learn, and then we would at least put forward um, recommendations to the appropriate arms of um, the federal government. But you know, looking at it further, you need to look at the fact that correctional centers in Nigeria were built in the 60s, early 70s, when the, measure, uh, the nature of crime was slightly not as sophisticated as they are now. At the time we built most of the correctional centers, we didn't ever say that there would be custodial centers for terrorists. Now they are. Um, when the Minister of Internal Affairs came, he did mention that um, Kuji Correction Center is the most fortified in the country. So if the most fortified correctional center in Nigeria can be overrun in one and the other, so you, well, it gives you an idea what the situation is with all the other correctional centers.